Hey, how's it everybody? My name is Philip and today we're going to carry on with our malaria talk. Welcome back to Travel Talk, the channel we talk everything travel and I answer all your questions. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and you won't miss out on any valuable content coming in future videos. And like I said, today we have part two of our talk on malaria and we will look at malaria prevention in a bit more detail. So with that said, let's get going. First off, we'll talk about malaria preventing tablets, what they call chemoprophylaxis. The three different types of tablets we'll talk about today are the three most commonly used. I would suggest you still check with your travel clinic and your travel doctor on the exact one of these medications that will suit best for your travels. What I'll also do is have a link to the Center of Disease Control website and you can get a lot more detailed information on the various different types of tablets you can get for malaria. The three tablets we'll talk about to you today is doxycycline, larium or mefloquine, and melarone. Those are the three that I've taken, well obviously not all at once, and they're also the three that's most commonly available. There are more, there are different ones, so I suggest you talk to your doctor and travel clinic to find out which would work best for you and for your destination. So the first one we look at, doxycycline. Out of the three, it is also the cheapest one that might be a deciding factor. It is a tablet that you can take just one to two days before you actually enter the malaria area. So it is convenient for last minute travelers. You do have to take it every day and ideally the same time of day with food. What I did every morning after breakfast, I had my tablet. Like I said, it's the cheapest. You have to take it every day. The thing is though, once you leave the malaria area, you still have to take the doxycycline every day for the next four weeks. The malaria parasite can be dormant in your liver for four weeks after you've been bitten. So it's very important to keep taking your doxycycline for the entire duration that you need to take it for. Other things to consider with doxycycline is pregnant ladies cannot take it and also children under the age of eight cannot take it. Another side effect of the doxycycline, especially if you're in a very hot sunny climate, you can get sunburned a lot easier. Also for travelers who's doing a short trip, maybe doxycycline is not the most practical because you still have to take it for four weeks afterwards. And with that said, we can move on to the next one, malarone, which is ideal for short term travelers because first of all, you again, just need to take it one or two days before entering the malaria area. And the time after you've left, until you have to stop taking it, it's a lot shorter than doxycycline. For malarone, you only need to, to take it for seven more days, one week after you've left the malaria area and you can stop taking it. Just another few things to consider is again, pregnant women should really not take this tablet and also children less than five kilogram should not take this. Also, like doxycycline, you have to take it every day. Again, I advise at the same time, time of day for the entire duration. And also it is a little bit more expensive than the doxycycline, but a lot of people really like the convenience of only having to take it for one more week after they've left the area. And then the third final one we'll talk about to today it's mefloquine, also known as larium. Me personally, it's not my favorite. Uh, it is convenient for some travelers because you only take this tablet once a week. 
but again make sure it's every same day every week so if you start taking it on a mondays every monday if it's every tuesday take it every tuesday you get the idea a few more things about the larium is you need to start taking it two weeks before you depart for your trip so it's not ideal for last minute travelers and also same as doxycycline you have to take it for four weeks after you've returned from the malaria area which for some travelers might also not be ideal the convenience so you only have to take it once a week and with larium pregnant women can use this one but also just make sure you don't go into an area where there's a mefloquine resistant strain of malaria some other considerations you need to know about is for people that have seizure disorders psychiatric disorders and possible cardiac related disorders this medication is not advised there's been cases and i can also tell you a story about what happened to me when i was on larium and a lot of people also say they have very weird vivid dreams and nightmares so you have to just be aware of these side effects so what happened to me while taking on larium i was in mozambique the malaria area i was taking it as prescribed and the one night i woke up i was inside my tent but to me i was outside of the tent and then i saw a cat jump out of the tree and as it landed on the ground it turned into a human needless to say i was very freaked out i didn't know what voodoo stuff was going on and then was like on my mind for so long what's going on what did i just see until i remembered one of the side effects of taking larium are weird dreams some people have had hallucinations so I wasn't losing my mind. It was the medication side effects. So if you know this, you can maybe handle it better too. But that was the last time I've used it and I haven't taken any larium since that one time. The other th very important things you need to do to prevent malaria is not to get bitten. Because if you're on these tablets, it's not a 100% guarantee that you won't get malaria. So please don't just take your malaria medications thinking I'm fine, it won't happen. You still need to try and avoid mosquito bites. Mosquitoes are most active between dusk and dawn. So make sure you're covered up, long sleeves, also long trousers, or for the ladies, long dresses, long skirts. Make sure you have a good anti-insect anti-mosquito repellent uh, usually with DEET and DEET is not always best for younger children's skin and also just one thing I've had DEET on and these rubber straps of my watch it actually started cor corroding the rubber uh, my skin was fine no reactions to that but it is quite strong then another thing, very important thing, sleep under mosquito net at night and do what you have to to prevent bites. A lot of places will have screens on the windows and the doors, so make sure that's closed. If you have an air conditioning, that can run. The colder temperatures will also deter any mosquitoes. Stay away from stagnant water areas. That's a breeding ground for mosquitoes. And if you travel, you can always look at when's the rainy season, when's the dry season, and you can plan your trip according to, to that. Because in the dry season, there's a lot less water, obviously, and a lot less mosquitoes. So there you go. Quick look at those three tablets. Like I said, there's a link below. Have a look at that. There's a lot more detail. There's other links you can click on to find out more. Before you travel, please do your homework. It's fine to go into a malaria area, just be prepared. And if you remember to have a look where it was pointing today, 
let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, share or like the video. Travel safe, we'll talk again soon.